Hi and welcome to this video which is going to show you how to um, use Sonic Pi on a Raspberry Pi with the latest uh, Raspberry Pi OS which now uses Pulse Audio as its main audio medium. Sonic Pi as you probably know um, fundamentally uses Jack to output its audio using the Super Collider SC Synth uh, module and what this uh, what I've done is to write a little uh, script which lets you switch back to using it with um, Jack solely um, and with the aid of QJack CTL in order to set it up. Now um, at the moment if we right click on the speaker icon you can see that on this Pi form which I'm running there are by default two uh, outputs one is the audio uh, jack and the other is an HDMI outlet down the cable going to your monitor which may have built-in speakers inside it and that's what's currently selected on mine. If I was to start up Sonic Pi and I've just installed version 3.3.1 which was very recently released and can be downloaded from the sonicpi.net um, website uh, if we start that up, then this is uh, had been configured to automatically use the Pulse Audio system by routing the output from Jack, the audio output from Jack, to Pulse Audio via a Pulse, Pulse Audio module Jack. Um, so here's the splash screen for Sonic Pi version 3.31 starting up. Incidentally, I'm uh, looking at this on my Mac to make it easier to record using um, VNC server to look at the screen. So this is the screen on, my, on a window in my Mac but it's actually coming from uh, a Pi 4. So that has started up and if we start playing the uh, example program Compass Beats then hopefully it'll be quite quiet because that's coming from the um, audio from my um, monitor which has not got very powerful amplifier inside it. You can just about hear it, I hope. And what I'm going to do now is to switch this while it's running to the jack output, which is connected to a Bluetooth speaker, which is slightly louder. And you can hear that running there. I could perhaps even possibly raise the output level of this. Oops. No, I think it's at, it's at full volume there. Okay, so that shows that it works and that we can switch the output according to the um, settings with Pulse Audio. But one of the problems with Pulse Audio is that it uh, increases the latency that you'll be using, which means that there's a delay between actually playing something and hearing it. Um, and this is quite um, uh, important if you start to to put inputs into Sonic Pi because the audio from them is liable to come in delayed when you hear it and it's quite difficult to play in real time say an instrument to accompany Sonic Pi. So what we can do is this, if we stop Sonic Pi from running uh, we need to utilize um, a program which is actually supplied with Sonic Pi and already loaded but it's actually hidden on the menu. If you look at the sound of video menu there's only uh, by default VLC video player. Uh, I'm assuming I'm, I'm using here the the straightforward um, OS install without the uh, additional applications which are available but what you can do is to go to the main menu down to preferences and to main menu editor and when that screen comes up if you go down to the sound section you can see that there's another program called QJack CTL which is not had the box saying show ticked. If we tick that and we now say OK and go back to the uh, sound um, menu, you can see that we've got this program QJack CTL there. Now, um, it's probably not uh, all that useful to make use of this if you're just using the internal um, sound sources on a Pi 4. Uh, namely the um, AV jack output and the output to HDMI. Um, but if you want to get a better performance, you might want to acquire um, an external USB audio card. Now these uh, range from 
uh, fairly cheap but nevertheless quite useful ones um, like um, one which you can get uh, on Amazon by TechRise um, and this is a simple USB dongle that plugs in and costs about nine pounds so really quite cheap to do or you can get a slightly better one and uh, quite a lot of people use focus um, right um, cards I've got here one which is by um, Steinberg a UR22 and I'm going to <coughs> plug it in to my um, Mac 4 now and <clears throat> when I've done that if we go back up to the uh, sound card here and right click on the um, speaker you can see that now we have got three audio outputs available the AV jack, the HDMI and the new Steinberg UR22 Mark II which is the um, USB interface I've just put in there and um, we could, uh, let's just run up Sonic Pi again, so I should have left it going for a minute longer. Let's just run it up again. And when it gets there, we're going to see that we can actually still switch to use that um, extra card. But the problem is that it will actually have a slightly worse latency than it could have under more optimal conditions. And we'll see how to change things in a moment. <clears throat> Here's the splash screen for Sonic Pi. And when it starts, I'm going to start it running again. And at the moment, the audio is coming out of the HDMI card. Now it's coming out of my speaker, which is plugged into the AV jack. And now it's a bit louder still. It's coming out of the Steinberg um, card and that is connected to an external amplifier with speakers which I've got here and I can actually got bags of output I could turn up here if I want to I could actually make it a bit louder here too right so you can see that uh, Pulse Audio for most users makes this very convenient and simple to change the audio routing even while Sonic Pi is writing now, in order to use the Steinberg one to its full uh, capacity, in other words, with the lowest latency we could get, um, it's important that we, first of all, make sure that we've selected another output than the Steinberg one, because we're going to actually hijack that from Pulse Audio, and if we have the both trying to connect to it, we'll run into problems. So I'm going to leave this on the HDMI setting, and I'm going to stop uh, Sonic Pi, and I'm going to come up to the menu here and go to the newly enabled QJack uh, program which I'm going to start up and <clears throat> when that starts up it's not actually running we don't want to start it running yet we need instead to go to the setup tab here and you'll notice that this is set to um, adjust jack when it runs to have a sample rate of 44100 and uh, frames per period of 124 and that gives quite a large latency of 46 milliseconds which is very very noticeable and so what we're going to do is to change this to run at 9600 which is um, a 960, uh, 96 uh, kilohertz which is what the um, uh, the top rate at which or one of the rates that the um, Steinberg uh, interface can handle and I'm also going to tempt Providence and make the buffer here a bit smaller and you can see that that's now got a latency of about 10.7 milliseconds which is much much better and is really quite usable if you're using a keyboard with your uh, Sonic Pi at the same time. <clears throat> now having done that we need to go to the advanced tab and to make sure that we're outputting not to the, anything at default but to a particular card and that if we click on here is the HW UR22 Mark II, the Steinberg one. There are two uh, outputs here. The one without the comma zero in the end is the output one, so I'm going to select that there. The one with the zero on the end is the input, so I'm going to select there, because one of the other additions that this will give us is the ability to have um, inputs coming into Sonic Pi via um, uh, external devices plugged into the uh, two audio inputs which are available on it. So having done that we say OK and we now go and start 
Jack running with this particular setting. And you can see that that's all gone green, which showing it started up nicely. If we go to the messages window in here and we look at the status, you can see that it says that it started running at 96,000 uh, hertz, um, at 512 frames in the buffer size, and that's ready to go. So that's fine. Now we can start a Sonic Pi running and built into Sonic Pi, um, if you're using a Raspberry Pi, is that it will use an existing version of Jack which is running rather than one it tries to run itself. So it's going to inherit these settings which are going to send it to the UR20, uh, the uh, Steinberg um, card. So let's start Sonic Pi running. <clears throat> And hopefully, it's going to go. Yes, here it comes. There's the uh, screen. <clears throat> and it's going to set itself up and be ready to go, hopefully, in a minute. There we are. Now, before we start running it, um, I'm going to go back to the Jack Audio Connector. And I'm going to look at a window which is called Connect. And this shows how um, <coughs> Sonic Pi, by default, is set up um, to work with Jack uh, feeding into Pulse Audio um, so that it normally uses the Pulse Audio system. The output from Super Collider here, these are the two outputs, they're getting a single stereo output, is fed into the inputs um, which are going to feed effectively to whatever audio speakers are, are, are connected to, to Pulse Audio here. And if there are any inputs coming from Pulse Audio, then they are going to be fed into Super Collider inputs here. Now that's how it's normally set up, but if we want to use the settings which are um, in this version of Jack that's running, we don't want to use um, Jack to Pulse Audio, we want to use the system setting, which is what this one is going to pick up. And so this is where I've written a little script which will enable this to happen. If we go to the terminal window here and start it up, that starts one up in the home folder and if I look at the contents by saying ls you can see that there is a script called sp underscore audio underscore root dot sh it's a, a script which can be used to adjust what is happening we can look at this also just perhaps in a text version to see what it is like this is opened up in the pi home folder and if we scroll down we can see somewhere down here the script and if I double click this and say I want to open it up it's going to open it up in a text file here and we can see that we have this script and it's going to have two an, an input that's going to be applied to it which is either the word jack or the word pulse audio and if the word jack is sent to it it's going to disconnect the pulse audio here and it's going to disconnect the uh, Super Collider being connected to Pulse Audio and instead it's going to connect Super Collider to the system playback and it's going to connect the system capture uh, to Super Collider input. Um, when we go back again it's going to do the reverse process. It's going to disconnect Super Collider from the system playback and disconnect the system capture going to Super Collider and it's going to reattach them to the pulse audio settings which we saw um, a moment ago um, on here. So it's going to disconnect those two lines and it's going to connect that to there and it's going to connect that to there when we run this script. So let's bring up the um, window for the terminal again and we start running this by saying star sp and in fact there's nothing else with that name so if I press tab it'll put the rest of the name in there and we're going to give it the parameter jack because we want to use jack output not pulse audio and when I press this 3, 2, 1 return you can see that it has reconnected the output paths and input paths of Super Collider to the system settings not using pulse audio. So now if we go back to Sonic Pi, you'll note, remember that we have got the pulse audio settings 
for the audio output going to HDMI and it's important we don't change that at the moment we leave it there but Sonic Pi is now set up to use the settings of the version of Jack which we are running in uh, QJack CTL the one we started up here so if we start this playing we should hear it coming out of the um, there we are that is now coming out of the amplifier rather than out of the um, built-in um, one on my monitor so that's how we do it and we will now have much much lower latency for this when we're as it's operating now we'll stop Sonic Pi playing and we can um, actually stop the whole thing there no we'll, no we'll leave it there because we can show that the um, this can actually switch back again let's just do this if we go to the connection setting so you can see them there we're going to run this last command again but this time I'm going to say connect it via pulse audio I can spell it right put an L in there there we are and we're going to send that if you watch the screen three two one press return that's now switched back again and if we actually run um, Sonic Pi again much quieter because it's now coming out of my HDMI monitor in fact I can do that while it's running we'll go back the other way so we're going to go back to um, this command which is going to connect to Jack and when I press the enter key, three, two, one, go. You heard the sound uh, volume go up and you saw the switch taking place there. And we'll go and we'll switch back again to pulse audio. There. So we will now um, close that window down. We will stop Sonic Pi running and we will stop, the, stop this version of Jack Audio from running. Now there is one uh, slight thing which is worth noting and that is that this can upset the connection of the um, uh, of the Steinberg interface to um, Pulse Audio so at this stage it's probably best just to unplug it plug it in again and now if we um, start up Sonic Pi again this is without the external jack, so it'll just use the internal settings which go to Pulse Audio. Once it starts up, you can see activity up here in the monitor. There goes the splash screen. And <clears throat> the moment here it's running, we will start it playing. By default, it's on the HDMI monitor but I can now switch it using pulse audio to go back to the Steinberg thing uh, this is often more convenient if you're not worried about the latency and it's not it doesn't matter that it's uh, fairly large at the moment you could just work in this mode at all just switch to the other mode when you need a much higher performance so I hope that gives you an idea of how this can work and uh, the script will be made available um, on a link which is in the notes below so that you can download the script and use it with your own system. Thank you very much for watching.